as today's session has earlier announced that vimayana experiences of untouchability uh, this text is going to be critically uh, discussed uh, by uh, professor mandal and everybody knows that you know uh, it's a graphics narrative rather novel which was published in 2011 and it was it was immediately it was hailed as one of the uh, top 5 graphic novels by cnn so but still it remains to be uh, uh, discussed in in elaborate term in elaborate term so we are going to have it today so without wasting much time uh, i would like to invite most cordially uh, professor mandal to inaugurate his speech and another point i must say that we have also been joined by professor kollan kumar das another very you know prominent uh, authoritative figure as far as dalit literature is concerned uh, in general and bhimrao ambedkar study is concerned in particular so we are so fortunate and we also welcome him most uh, uh, heartily to our session now i have already consumed much time not more time to be consumed and now i would like to invite professor mandal to begin his today's special discussion thank you so much thank you professor roy for such a warm introduction and i think before i begin i must congratulate all you people who have been behind this huge and extraordinarily organized event bringing scholars and enthusiasts from all across the universities and uh, academic spaces uh into this discussion and i have a few requests since i will be presenting a few high definition images and if there is any glitch in the presentation or in the transmission of images please let me know to the chat box uh because since we are talking about comics i think we cannot talk about comics if the we, we don't discuss images you know we can uh you know actually understand the process of manufacture of manufacture that kind of goes behind comics and how you read comics uh essentially as a, as an act of pleasure you know reading comics give you a lot of fun reading comics give you a lot of happiness but in recent years uh reading comics has developed a mechanism or a dynamic of its own and it has a few rules use few operative terms which i will be inclined to discuss so even before i begin a discussion of the mayana i think a bit of time should be spent on how we take up a comics we take up a comics sometimes for fun it it it, it you know the element of pleasure the element of leisure has been integrally related to the idea of reading comics and in only in recent years we have actually moved away from seeing this genre of reading comics uh, away from something which is not fun we, we are trying to see this activity as a more serious as a more rigorous and uh, academic uh, discipline which requires laborious reading which requires laborious circuitous engagement now uh, a few more things that i need to talk about before i just go headlong into the text that when we talk about vimayana and its emotional and and other experiential uh, models that are there it talks about vimrao ambedkar but what is interesting to know that it has a formal grammar of its own it has a specific way which allows you to enter its story world now unless you are well grounded through those entry points that i am picking up vimayana i am reading what at the very rudimentary at a very basic level i am reading a sequential narrative a very slipshod and a very common place way to put it would be that i am actually looking at reels 
of a film. I am actually looking at the reels of a cinema which have been frozen. Now, this is what we should not do. Because the moment I am trying to give you an analogy about reading comics through the cinematic idiom, what, I, what did I just tell you? I tell you that, that comics is a sequential art form. So I am kind of beginning with the definition of comics. Of course, it kind of comes from European and Western traditions, and we will very shortly see how Vimayana explodes this tradition. Vimayana, this comics, is, 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 is at a juncture of so many things. It, it is, it is, at, it is at, at the heart of how the Indian visual arts industry kind of negotiated this talent from the margins the subaltern talent, so to say. <coughs> so, you know, when you pick up Vimayana, you must understand that you are not only engaging with the verbal and visual form. Comics, the definition which the comics master, Will Eisner, gives you is that comics is a sequential art form. It employs both visuals and it employs both verbal expressions, captions, speech images, words. Now, this collaboration can be extremely problematic. Why it is problematic, I'll be coming to that in a short while. But the point I am insisting before even we pick up these comics, the comics by uh, Durga by Vyam and Shubhash Vyam, we must understand that this comics has a special grammar of its own. It will allow you to understand its sequence of experiences. And if I have to use a very difficult term, I would kind of explain all these operative terms like sequential, the other you know, uh, terms that I use when I talk about comics. I will be explaining that, that when you pick up this comics, and in order to understand the experiences that are drawn and expressed there, we have to understand how it works. In other words, you have to understand its basic grammar. Now, the basic grammar, how the images and the words come together to give you the sense of a moving image. Again, look. The mistake that I have already committed, I have already spoken about comics in terms of films. Now, this is, and this is also my research that has I have been, you know, continuing for the last couple of years. But let us start talking about comics through its proper and special ground. Let us not try to understand. The more we try to do this, you know, it leads to lot many critical mistakes. Let us try to talk about comics through the very specific grammar it itself possesses. I would, you know, use a different word for the comics grammar. I prefer to use the word or, or, or the term comics infrastructure. But there is, you know, try to see comics as a building with many windows and doors, and it has a special material quality to it. That you pick up a comic, you read it, and immerse yourself, enter into its story, into its story world, which in the comics parlance is known as digesis, the digetic world, the story world of a comic. Now, how is it possible? OK, so there are two very distinct traditions of understanding a comic, and especially when we are dealing with a, an exploding prolific narrative like Vimayana, which is so very different from the other comics that you read or that you have read, both from Western European canons and also closure homes. For example, I am sure that they are in my audience today and there are many people, and especially for Bengal and outside Bengal, people must have read the you know iconic comic arts that we have come across, and we still come across in in form of Indrojal comics. We have all uh, just just a moment. Am I audible and visible? Just a check. Hello. Just, am I audible and visible? Yes, you are perfectly yes, audible and yes. visible. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So we have come across different forms of comics, like Indrojal comics. We all know the name of Arun Mudeb and Phantom. We all know, uh, you know, Amur Chitrakotha series. We all know Chacha Choudhury and Pran. And there are diverse other forms of comics uh, that we have come across in our own Bengal. We have, we have still have Nonte Fonte, Hada Moda, and Patul the Great. There are, I'm sure, in my audience, many people who have come across Tintin have reveled in the world of Tintin, right? So, what I am pointing at is a diverse tradition of comics making. Now, unless we spend a bit of time on comics making, and the point that I was trying to insist that if you are not well trained in what is the art form that this comic will be discussing today, Vimayana is all about. Your experience of that comic is foreclosed. Even before you, you begin the comic, the comic, and I am here talking about Vimayana, even before you open the page and look at its forms, and, and its form is a Gondi art form. I'll be talking, I'm actually, my lecture is actually moving towards that Gondi art form, even before you have understood its, you know, your experiences, you have, the comics has allowed it, you know, given you forays into its story world, the experience and the affect of it falls flat. So the first thing we must do, that we must understand that, well, this is a sequential art form. This is the verbal and the visual images and prose in captions, in word bubbles. So, uh, you know, uh, just to give you uh, a very quick glimpse of what is, uh, you know, this, is, this has to be a very rudimentary thing that, uh, you know, this is a word bubble. You know, the, if, if this is a figure, this is a word bubble or a speech bubble as you know it, know it right? So here is caption, here is a figure who is, you know, talking to you or kind of doing whatever he pleases. And there is this you know, bubble that you find, okay? Now, this is a speech bubble. Now, I, I apologize because I can, cannot use other more sophisticated forms of projection, but I think this will do the work. But, you know, this is a speech bubble. What is this? This is a speech bubble. Now, you will also come across a word when you read comics, which is known as a thought bubble. Now, what is a thought bubble? And a person in a comic is thinking. So, you just make this bubble and give this small, minute. So, it, 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 it's not an arrow, but this is, it becomes the small bubbles, kind of connecting your, you to a figure. So this is a bubble. This is a thought bubble. Person, Shagor, uh, Shagor, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, we can't yes. see you. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, am I, am I visible now? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. I am visible. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I just needed this intervention a bit, you know, yeah. kind of when, yeah. when, because the, the, internet, the Wi Fi is horrible today. So, anyway, okay. so, so I, what I was talking about, so let us kind of, you know, the time, the limited time we have got, let us talk about that what is the specific grammar of Vimayana. It has a specific, how it combines the verbal, the speeches, the articulations and the visual, its specific tradition of drawing, how it brings them together into a sequential collaboration and expresses its affects and experiences. Because if you, if you read the title of our graphic novel today, Vimayana, Experiences of Untouchability. Now, how to convey this experience, you know, the, let me kind of, you know, before I go into this, before I go into the spectacular history that lies behind Vimayana, nobody talks about the spectacular 
history that lies behind Vivayana. And you know, we, we, you know about these two artists, Durga Bai Vyam and Subhash Vyam, who have drawn this Gondi or Gondi images, this anthropocentric, animal-like, fluid images. But who is the precursor of this art? And the precursor of this art, you know, I, th I think that, you know, some scholars should actually go into and talk about this. Because the precursor of Gondi, because I'm kind of, you know, just leaping, going ahead my lecture, but just kind of, you know, give you the overview of what, what will follow. The precursor of this art is not Durga Bhai Vyam, but, or Shuvash Vyam, but Jangar Singh Shia. Now, if you not have heard of this name, I repeat the name, Jangar Singh Shia. He was the person who brought Gondi art or the art form that you see in Vimayana into prominence. But you know, why do I actually take up the name of this man who is no more with us? Jangar Singh Shyam, you know, Durga Bhai Vyam and um, uh, Subhash Vyam who followed in his footsteps. Jangar Singh Shyam committed suicide and it is one of the most mysterious and enigmatic suicides. He killed himself while in an artist residency away in Japan. He killed himself. And this is one of the most enigmatic, mysterious and celeb you know, celebrated celebrated in a way that you know people talk about excavating the real reasons but no such solid efforts are yet forthcoming now if you have not heard of this man you will not be ready to take up vimayana and his suicide is one of the most you know unexplored and yet mysterious events in the world of indian visual history Jangar Singh Shah. So what, what, what I have already done before you, I have given you a fairly, you know, intimidating idea. There is nothing to be scared of. I, I can see a lot many students. I know some of them are coming in. So people who know that uh, the kind of medium I work with, but I'm trying to one, tell you two things. I just have two expectations from, from this audience that if you are trying to read comics and you are trying to convert comics into a serious academic discipline, we cannot anymore, and I think this has not been forthcoming um, uh, in the recent sorry, years. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Uh, Mondal. We are not visible at this moment, you know. There Maybe is. Something. You are still invisible. I am still invisible, but. Yes, yes. Yes, now you are, you are visible. Okay, I, th I, I think Shubhrata Babu, it's, it's, it's just the Wi-Fi. Just let me know when I'm invisible. I'll just switch off and switch on again. The moment I'm switching right, on, right. I'm invisible. Just, just, just signal me. I thank you so yeah. much. Thank you thank so much. You. Go on, go on. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, so, so you know, so I have only, I mean, you know, we if when we start reading, we have comics. We have to keep two things in mind, and that what I was talking about. That we have not been able to do this. You know, whenever we talk about comics, it comes about comes out as a very non-serious, a very you know a something which is related to leisure. Of course, it is related to leisure. It you know looking at comics is a very felicitous event. It gives you a lot of happiness. It kind of immerses you into a different uh, world. I don't want to take that experience away from you because the moment it goes, the reading of comics. You know, it's 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 very difficult. But have you ever considered the fact that with comics, from its very origin, the idea of leisure has been associated? You know, in your in your you know very leisurely afternoons, you will pick up a Batul the Great or Nonte Fonte or Cha Cha Chowdhury. You know, you will build all your childhood era world around it. You'll imagine yourself in the place of Arunodev or Flash Gordon or Bahadur. Or Tinkle, or or the various you know, uh, you know heroes of Amor Chitrakota. So if you keep this in point, now let me ask you this: Will you be able to bring the same amount of happiness, felicity, 
or richness or you know pleasure of reading when you talk about or when you read a comics like vimayana which talks about the exclusion of a category of human beings when you talk about when a, which when a comics talk about talks about untouch untouchability when a talk comics is actually talking about how a young boy was not allowed to drink water in his school premises my question is what kind of experience or affect does it generate does it in any way hinder your pleasure so uh some i think someone okay okay so does does it any way hinder your pleasure so two things here the way you read nonte fonte or batul the great or chacha choudhury would not be the same as when you pick up vimayana now obviously you can say that both these formats are different of course these formats are different their subject matters are different right one talks about the injuries and the vulnerabilities of caste distinction and another talks about other elements for example you know you know you know uh, sky fi and science fiction elements or other other elements which are not reliant on bodily or uh, injuries or uh, uh, exclusion that you find in vimayana i give you that i understand that these two genres or these two comics might have different subject matters but one thing that you must understand that all comics have a grammar a combination of the visual and the verbal and that is the point where vimayana differs from this comics right now i have already mentioned to you about uh janders and sham and before i go into go into uh, uh vimayana no you will all be able to then and this is this is the caution cautionary tale that i was trying to provide and this is the you know provise or stipulation even before you pick up this comic that you have to know who janders singh sham is who what is the kind of art these two people durga bai vyam and shubhash vyam produce what is the nature of their art how this art was brought to brought into prominence and how it clashes with other visual mediums you know and i i i'll be using very two provocative terms that how it clashes with more western hegemonic and sanskritized or brahmanical forms of visual art you know these are very provocative pro problematic terms but i will show you how 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 vimayana differs from that so once you know the extent the machinations of the gond art which you find in vimayana you will be able to read the comics so all what i have said till now so all this preliminary this introduction is about to let you handle this comics to give you a reading route give you a reading map that you can you know when, once you are able to acquire that you will be able to you know kind of you know engage with this very fluid form of art form that you find in vimayana so without you know wasting any more time let me actually uh uh you know present you a very important art form what i will be kind of you know showing you you know panels from amor chitra katha first right and then i will show you so this is our now so we are kind of started to get our hands dirty now we'll show the what is the actual visual grammar of um, you know uh, vibhayana and how it differs from your reading of pran and uh, uh, pran's charan choudhury or anand spies amor chitra katha or nonte fonte or batul the great why vibhayana is so important why vibhayana has been kind of set out by set down by cnn as the you know five most important graphic novels that has come from the indian I... continent right 
Now, uh, let us, uh, okay, uh, just let me present this. Okay, I think, uh, is the panel visible? Anyone can respond? He is visible, but a bit darkened. Okay, 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 okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Not that clear. Okay, okay, okay. I am just increasing the resolution. Okay, just a second. I think I, th I think they, this would I think is a better yes much better and quite uh, beautifully visible go on okay so uh, you know so what you are seeing here is uh, can you can you see this animal can anyone respond hello yes it is visible you know a okay, darker okay. body yes okay. okay so just a second you know Now, okay, I think it's it's there, right? So, it's much prominent. Okay, so this 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 is this is this is a painting done by the our very own the the one of the people who have kind of you know visualized Vimayana. This is a Gondi painting or Gond painting by Durga Bai Via. Right, it, it depicts a village uh, scene where people are actually, you know, fishing, washing their utensils, swimming. And one thing that you must notice that in Gondi painting, apart from birds and trees, the element or depiction of water becomes very important. So I'm sure that, you know, if you have read Vimayana, even for once, you have ac come across the depiction of water in such, you know, fluid visual iconography. Uh, I would like to show you one more important uh, uh, So this, this, no, you, you, what you, what you are seeing right now is an, uh, you know, is an image. It's a kind of, it, it's the Gondi painting done by none other than Jangar Singh Shia, the man who kind of brought the kind of art form that you see in Vimayana brought to prominence. Now it's a picture of a dog, you know, a dog which is with, which is kind of moving forward and yet it is startled. Okay, and you can see this blue beads around its eyes kind of looking backwards. 
Now again, in the in the other picture or the other image of the village scene that I discussed uh, of Durga by Vyam, you could see the water motif, depiction of water bodies, you know, finding prominence in her Gondi artwork. The Gondi artworks are actually very big, you know, you know, not less than 24 by uh, 25 centimeter, which kind of exceeds the normal uh, landscape that is provided through a comic book. Through a comic book. Now, so, so you have this very celebrated picture by Jangar Singh Shyam. You can, you can, what, what you actually read in this beautiful creature, you know, you can see red beads. It, it's, 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 it's a very abstract art. It, it is done in entirely in black. And, and Jangar stopped from, you know, decorating the entire body of the animal because, because someone stopped him from doing it. Because it, he, 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 that person told Jangar that if you decorate and ornament the entire body of the animal, this dog, with beads, it will lose its European dimension. I don't know whether, you know, Jangar was very pleased with the suggestion, but he kept it like that. So you have blue beads around the eyes of this animal, a dog, and you have red beads also kind of, you know, spiraling around its neck. So the red beads stand for agitation. Someone has startled the dog. The dog is actually moving forward. It is startled and it is just looking back. Right. Now, uh, Okay, uh, Shubhrata Babu, am I audible now? Yes, you're audible, but like Arunadi have gone invisible, you know. Okay, okay. N am I visible now? No, not now yet, you know. Okay, okay. Well, just, just, okay, uh, it will come back. Now? Now you're visible. Yes, oh, go on, okay. visible. Just, just you know, the presentation lack. So, you know, uh, so the, you know, the pictures that you just saw by Jangar Singh Shyam, I can't hear you. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Sound yes, sir. Hey, Anirban, tell me. I mean, I'm a kind of sonar. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Definitely, I'm sonar. But I'm not sure. Sonar. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. It's just the Wi-Fi that is kind of playing havoc. The camera and the audio is on. Okay. They are suddenly going off. I sincerely apologize for that. Okay, just give me a signal or write me in the chat box that uh, you know you know there is a bit of disruption. But you know we are trying to do our best. So uh, so let me kind of you know uh, kind of take you through uh, what Jangar did. Now, uh, the Jangar Singh Shyam, who actually invented this form of artistic production that you see, very fluid, very anthropomorphic, which kind of, you know, uh, you, you know obviously in, in uh, Vimayana, you will find that even everyday material commodities are kind of drawn in the image of animals very fluid, very plural, very hard. You know, critics have kind of labeled uh, the Gondi art that you see in Vimayana as very hybrid, as a mixed genre, right? Now, how it is different from other comics? Now, they, they, today it is not possible to go to each European and Western canon and kind of study it difference. But let us start with something which is very closer home. For example, let us start with Amor Chitra Katha. Light. Now, Amor Chitra Katha, uh, which, was, who, which was founded uh, by, the, uh, by the editor Anand Pai, did two things. First of all, it kind of played a very middle game that 
you know, for the Indian middle class household, comics was not something uh, a serious enough enterprise. Now, what Om Amur Chitrakata did, it was able to Sanskritize its visual form. Now, obviously, you know Amur Chitrakata, you know delves in martyrs, you know our glorious heroes. But what it essentially followed, it followed, uh, even the name you see, Amur Chitrakata, which, which kind of suggests opposition to, to the comics tradition that you, that you see abroad, that you see with Tintin, Amur Chitrakata. So, you know, memorializing of the past. So it was, it followed a very rudimentary comics format. Now, I am actually talking about how comics works. And what is this rudimentary comics format? Omar Chitrakatha, you know, did something very simple. It used, you know, a very conventional Western grid. Now, this is a very important word if you have to, you know, deal with comics. What is a grid? And what is a tunnel? Now, grid is a mechanism. It is a process of how you arrange panels on a comics page. As simple as that. I will not kind of go into the complicated history, how this term came into, uh, you know, presence uh, and, and, and who kind of conceived of it. Greeting is very simple. When you look at comics, you find rectangular boxes with speech. And you read, go from one box to the other. You essentially do a left to right reading, right? So, you know, panels, if this is a page, these are rectangular boxes, these are panels, right? So in a Amor Chitrakatha comic, you will find a series of rectangular boxes. You will find a series of rectangular windows you know, frames or tunnels. You move from one panel to the other. And, you know, there are speech boxes um, to kind of help you. But there is one, so you, you have learned one operative term. You have come across the word grid. What is grid? How do you arrange panels on a comic surface? You know, it, 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 is, it is not a very hard and fast rule that you can use the entire page to just show one image. So your entire page contains just one panel, which in the comics lexicon is known as the splash page, an evocative page, an explosion, as if the image is kind of, has possessed of certain three dimensionality in it, and it is going out of the comics page itself. It has kind of, uh, you know, gained a corporeality, a sense of physical dimension of its own. It is kind of sucking you into the comics world. So, you know, there is no hard and fast rule that there has to be six windows on the comics page itself. One, two, three, four, five, six. The, the entire a single comics page can have one image and one panel, which in the comics format is known as the splash page. Now, Omur Chitrakata usually follows this traditional format of panels. It fo follows a traditional format of gridding, arrangement of panels. You will find rectangular boxes with images in it, and they kind of kind of move from one to the next. But here we come to the another most important thing of comics reading. What I am trying to essentially do, people might say that I am not actually talking about uh, Vimayana per se, because we cannot talk about Vimayana per se unless I teach you these three, you know, talk about these two or three things. We I kind of equip you how you read a comic. It's affective and experiential structure. So one, you have understood that gridding, that how you arrange panels, for example, uh, you know, uh, just a second, just a second, uh, justice. I'm sorry about this. So, you know, I am showing you 
something uh, absolutely different. I think this is how we kind of extend the frontiers of comics reading. So uh, let us kind of get you to a different form of comic art. So for example, uh, so this is uh, a comic on the Middle East where you will find a depiction of a massacre. The Israeli army is committing a massacre, killing Arabs back during the year 1956. And this comics is by Joe Sacco. If you know, people who read comics know Joe Sacco. So the name of the comics is Footnotes in Gaza. So, so Joe Sacco here, he is investigating, you know, a, you know, a, a, a little known massacre. He has gone into the Middle East and investigating. So, you know, here you will find this comic, right? I'll just put it here. Okay. Now, what you find here are rectangular boxes. Okay. And you can see that, uh, that, that the box or the panel, the length, it can change. Right? But what I really want you to show you is that, for, for example, another. So this is a very conventional comics format where you have panels or windows. A comics person is at its liberty to how I arrange this. This is known as greedy, right? But okay, but it can also assume forms like this, where you are kind of making small panels within panels. Right now, what Vimayana does is move away from this format, not only in its panels or kind of arrangements, but it also does away with a very important thing. And that is the most important uniqueness of Vimayana by way of its grammar of reading, by way of its visual politics, by or by way of its visual grammar, that it does not have a gutter. G-U-T-T-E-R. Now, what is this gutter? Now, gutter, when you look at Vimayana, for example, you know, you know, there there are there are no, you know rectangular windows or square windows. There are no rectangular or square windows. It is a full page. In fact, I must say, if I have to talk in terms of technique, Vimayana is entirely composed of splash pages. It does away with com conventional compartmentalization, conventional boxing of experiences and affect or emotional sets as if it gives you the idea and, and, and I think this is the one of the first experience you get when you read Vimayana that the experience of humiliation and the experience of exclusion is actually spilling out of the com comic it cannot be compartmentalized it cannot be put into conventional boxes like the way or, or the kind of either the mechanism or the system that you see in conventional comics like Amor Chitra Kotha. Right. So even, even, I, I, I must say that the entire book of Vimayana is composed of splash pages, exploding pages. And these are no also in, in the comics term and, and it will kind of kind of connect with the you know experiential analogy. You the emotional uh, landscape of Vimayana that these pages uh, bleed into each other. These are also known as bleeds, B L W -E D. So it you know it will spill out. These are not compartmentalized. But you know, having said this, there is one more important thing, and that is and that what I was actually talking about. That Vimayana does not have gutters. What are gutters? Now, 
In a cinema, again, I am kind of reverting to the analogy of the cinema. That you are kind of seeing a moving reel without any gap. Obviously, there are other cinematic techniques that, you know, there is a fade in and a fade out. A scene would kind of transform to the next scene. But comics does not have such mechanics at its disposal. Comics has a very simple thing and a very beautiful thing. It has the gutter. Now, without wasting much time, what is a gutter? Now, what I have told before I have begun this lecture, you know, a very rudimentary definition of comics, that comics is a sequential art form. It combines both the verbal and the visual. Right. But essentially, when you read a comics, okay, and, you know, you know, and, and a very important reminder, I should have already given you this, that I am using the word comics, not comic. And this is a distinction that you must make. A comic book and comics. Comics is essentially a format, right? You can use the term in the plural. Comics is a format. So, again, coming back to the concept or the talk of the gutters. Now, gutters, so a comic space is essentially static, like a film. Or a cinema that you are seeing, people are not moving and milling around you. You can obviously you can turn the pages, but that has a different name as well. So comics has gutters, and what is a gutter? And that and and this is something that you will find in every comic that you have read, from Amor Chitrakota to Nonte Fonte, Batul the Great, Chacha Choudhury and Pran, Orunno Dev. Comics, and 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 this is a very important thing. Comics is the wide space between the rectangular boxes. You know, in every comic, you know, conventional form of comic, you will find a white space. Just, just this little margin, this little margin, you know, how one panel is, the, in, and you will get in every comic. It is known to Fonte, Adaboda, Batul the Great. This is known as the gutter, the guttural space, right? So these, small white space is very important and you know i have kind of and and this is is very important because it unfreezes the comics page what it does it unfreezes it it gives the comics page motion it gives the comics page a pace forward how suppose you are seeing a superman panel Superman is hit by a bullet and, the, and in the next panel you find the Superman is not visible in the panel. <coughs> this is it. So the gutter allows you to imagine what has happened in between. So the white space is the imaginative and the word that I have been using quite repeatedly during the course of my lecture is affective. It helps you to connect the actions together. So that is the difference between a comic book and a cinema. In cinema, there is no white space. A cinema is a moving continuous reading, but comics does not have that advantage that how do I connect the scenes? So the comics invites the reader that you must connect the scenes. You must connect these two rectangular panels. <coughs> and imagine for yourself, or the word that I am prone to using, revisualize for yourself what has happened in between. So, you know, you know, you know, I'm trying to kind of put in a lot of things within this small space of time. Two things have come out. One is gutter, the white space between panels. It helps you to imagine how the action has unfolded between the panels, what has happened. So it kind of incites and excites the reader's imagination and visualization. The other is, is, is this concept of the grid, that how do you arrange the panels? How do you arrange these rectangular boxes on the page? And how do you use the white space? Now let us go to Vimayana, having understood this. But I, I think if three or four words, you know, would do good when we talk about Jangar Singh Shem once more, if we have the time. So 
Vimayana radically does away with these things. Vimayana will not follow the conventional pattern of grading. Vimayana does not have ordinary panel boxes, conventional panel boxes. And since it does not have panels, rectangular boxes here, you know, each, each panel <coughs> of Vimayana follows a different guttural exposition, different guttural technique. Are there the rectangular boxes? No. There are no rectangular boxes. Right. Now, another thing is that since it will not follow such a conventional grading pattern, its gutters are exploded. And this is the most important thing to remember when you take up or when you engage with the visual grammar of the Mayana, that it gutters. It does not have any white space. The visual storytelling in Vimayana is not confined to a white space between panels. It does not have the conventional layout of panels. So, you know, visually, what kind of a artistic statement it is trying to make? Obviously, that it will not follow the kind of, you know, visual techniques which mainstream visual arts of or you know media have followed by exploding its gut gutters by ex, you know by doing away with gutters with white spaces you know so where is the gutter here you know you will find that it is a very uni in, in innovative use of you know compartmentalized storytelling no you how do you read you know the essential dilemma is when you read, take up a page like this, there are two or three very important visual metaphors that are replete in Vimayana. First is water. Second is the transformation of material uh, you know, uh, commodities, material artifacts like a bus into an animal form. You know? So can you say that what is, what is, what is the affective function of this? The, the only function, you know, we are open to discussion. Obviously, we will have questions. But one thing that when they depict animals, like the very important drawing that I have shown of Jangar Singh Shyam, they are actually bringing into their storytelling a vigilante stance. That people are always on the alert. People are looking back. People are afraid. People are surveilled. Now, I, I think, I, I, I think when, and this is a very important thing to understand in terms of uh, Vimayana, because as I have said earlier, that the water motif becomes a very important thing. The moment Dalits in the story world of Vimayana touch water or come close to water bodies, riots break out and various forms of exclusionary acts follow. Dalits are, you know, you, you know kind of, you know, are shown their place, they are chastised, you know, they are kind of banned from using public arenas. So water becomes a very important visual metaphor here. Now, water is fluid, water flows around, and, and maybe, maybe this, this water symbolism is what Durga Bai and, you know, and, and Subhash is using to use, uh, you know, instead of gutters that they use small riverine bodies in place of conventional square boxes to kind of, you know, to give a pattern or an organization to Vimayana story world. Well, because the first thing that, you know, kind of really troubles you, that where do I begin and where do I end? When I, when, when I, when I start with uh, a text like Vimayana, and that is exactly the, you know, the precise politics of Vimayana, that this is an exploding network. You know, the image has spilled into your lived environment. The image is not kind of put in boxes. There are, you know, again, I'm kind of continuously repeating that these are the two very important things 
that we must understand when we deal with a comics like Vimayana, that it is not like Omur Chitrakata visualization, right? It is not like a, a comics setting team. It will use animal imageries and one of the very important function and also water imageries, but one of the very important functions of these two imageries is that water is trying to find a way just like the Dalit visual aesthetics or the Dalit visual art form is tries to kind of locate itself within a very mainstream media, right? Now, Jangar Singh Shyam, the person who kind of, kind of invented this Gondi form of art and who actually committed a suicide away in Japan uh, in a, during an artist's res residency because people said that he was actually <coughs> squeezed between the demands of the commercial markets and he could not follow the freedom of his own art. And that is one of the you know, very enigmatic suicides uh, that is still uh, left unexplored. So Jangar Singh Shyam was discovered by a man called Swami Nathan. You know, so he was discovered in a remote village in Madhya Pradesh and who was uh, brought back to Vopal and he was kind of made to kind of accommodate his art into the mainstream visual market. Right, and, and, and that, that, that saw the, the first rise of this Gondi form of art. You know, 20 years back, you know, you could just kind of go into various fairs and buy a beautiful Gondi art form for a price, say, 500 rupees. Now this is not anymore possible. You have to dish out between 5 to 14 lakhs. So, you know, you have also to keep in mind the commercialization that has since taken place when Jangar erupted into the scene, when prolific writers, people who kind of did this graphic text, erupted onto the scene. So, Vimayana, you know, is located at a very specific juncture. Jangar Singh, Jangar Singh Shyam came onto the scene, popularized the Gondi form of art, right? And... Then Vimayana came and, the, and, and, and another trajectory followed for this Gondi tradition of painting, which became commercialized. And Jangar could not adopt himself, adapt himself to this, you know, burgeoning commercial politics. He committed suicide. And, and I, I still think a, 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 an investigation, a body of art work should kind of look into this, the death of, of, of the Dalit graphic artist. You know, if we can kind of put... Uh, uh, Jangar Sem Shyam into into such a category, so you know, you, you know again, in, in, again to reiterate the fact that the thing, the, the, the visual idiom that comes across when you and this I, I I'm, I'm trying to just kind of summarize it for you that what essentially narratively speaking, Vimayana tells you. It tells you about the exclusion and most importantly, and I think this is something we usually miss <coughs> when you talk about um, the Vimayana, that it talks about an affective atmosphere, an emotional atmosphere of humiliation. How do you present humiliation? Now you are, yes, you are drawing, you are talking about it. But how do you present humiliation on the flat surface of a comics? How how you create an affective depth in a comics depth in a comic surface? Because if comics is about relaying a lived reality, how essentially a comic like Vimayana, which kind of does away with all conventional Western visual forms of grammar? The comics is that is so different that their comics will not follow, you know, the kind of color or the kind of boxing or the kind of uh, visual arrangement that you will find in Montefonte or Tintin. Now, how do you talk about Dalit humiliation and its affective politics? Again, to repeat this, on the flat surface of a comic book, a comic book doesn't work if it does not give you the idea of depth or it creates depth cues. Now that is, has been lacking and that, you know, nobody talks about that, how, how you immerse yourself into the comic book, which is essentially trying to talk about humiliation. 
and talking about about this you know you know politics of humiliation in the context of untouchability it also you know you know you know brings us back to the point that you know if does vimayan actually tell you that how you need to fight back humiliation so how is it mobilizing its anti humiliatory tactics does it kind of go back to the brahmanical or the savarna tradition that is depicted again and incorporated within the gondi art form and kind of gives you an arsenal that obviously talks about education agitation and other forms of you know you know you know uh, elements at your disposal where where you can transcend the element of humiliation and seclusion and exclusion but the question again is because you are dealing with a visual verbal form here that how how you kind of implicate and embroil the reader look this person vimra ambedkar on his school premises is not allowed to drink water or when he is on a sightseeing scene in baroda there is a possibility that a riot might be you know breaking between the mahars who are uh, traveling the scene and the upper caste people who do not want the mahars to use the um, village pond now how do you imagine the question actually boils down to the you know you know and again narratively speaking you know a person who is actually dealing with a dalit text would say that the question actually boils down to a lived reality that how you do kind of kind of convey this lived reality but you don't have the this you know mechanics of a cinema you don't have audio how do you kind of convey this effective framework to the comic reader by creating depths and this is where and i'm almost towards the you know kind of i have i have, I have taken a lot more time i think this is where you know vimayana is able to create depths proliferation of the comics page that you almost kind of feel through the comics grammar that the book or the page or the experience or the narration does not end here it goes into a domain of extra text uh, intertextuality it is spilling out and it is implicating your own lived reality and it does by these two simple things that it does away with the idea of grids no conventional boxes in your page it con it uses two very basic metaphors of water and animals and the animals are always given a vigilante pose they are always alert they are always looking back as if someone is kind of looking at them someone is calling them uh, from the back and and, and 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 this motif has sustained in vimayana from that picture that i have showed a big a, a very big image that was drawn by jangar singh shyam that people, you know they they are they cannot relax and that is one that is one of the very important um uh you know you know finding or kind of realization that i have read that you know i don't find characters in dalit narratives there are uh, other dalit visual narratives that are coming uh, out slowly but i don't find when there is such a kind of conjunction between uh, dalit pers personalities being being kind of you know kind of being kind of portrayed with a with a different uh, uh, you know animal exhibit with an animal quality i think this is not a kind of a derogatory point what durga bai and shubhash wants wants to kind of you know push this quality of vigilantism this quality that a dalit out in the public space always needs to be alert someone is always interpolating them calling out hey you are a dalit why you are touching the village pond so this this is a very consistent thing that you will find in vimay so two things before very quickly that um that i need to kind of uh, kind of repeat that it does not have the conventional pattern of panelization it does not have uh, gutters or white spaces in fact the entire vimayana is composed of splash pages and the kind, and even if if you try that under the constraints of the mainstream book book market these two artists are kind of forced to kind of adopt 
uh, conventional Western forms of uh, comics drawing, they would convert these boxes and the gutters into serpentine fluid and plural images like a snake or a python or a flowing river. I, I, I think I think I think I have overshot my time by quite some time. Shubhrata Babu, I think I think uh, I'm you know we can kind of have a few questions. I think I think that would be all. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. It, it has been so engaging and absorbing. You know, we have been absolutely captivated. You know, no, I am but extremely now, sorry that I took a bit of time. I just got carried away. But I, people are busy here. Kollan is here. He's he's extremely busy. Shonjay Babu is there. You are there. Uh, Chondri Badi, I could see her for some time. I am really delighted that all of you could find some time to come in and kind of, and, and I apologize for the Wi-Fi speed also, but you know, to the extent we could do it. And thank you, Anit. It was relevant, you know, because you know how, yeah, Anit, uh, actually when you were talking about Arunodim, sometimes you have gone invisible and it goes with the spirit of comics, you know. Comic yeah. characters might go sometimes invisible, like Arunodim or Phantom. <laughs> now, Dr. Anivan Bhattacharya is coming up. And he will be, you know, uh, having his own ideas and thoughts about the special lecture delivered by Professor Mandal. Onivanda, please. Uh, thank you, Professor Shagotarongo Mandal. Uh, thank you for this really, really fascinating, brilliantly fascinating lecture. Very informative, very intimate, detailed, insightful. Uh, intimate, detailed, insightful, and uh, this is. This is absolutely in parity with the notion or the motto of the workshop that we, are, we, are, we have earlier designed or thought of, conceived of. And thank you very much. And uh, I was uh, thinking of or I was uh, wondering to pitch in a query that is connected with, uh, that is connected with um, the question that you raised at the very opening, at the very beginning of your lecture that uh, about the digestis and comic infrastructure. The two, uh, two segments are interconnecting together. And I was thinking of Ambedkar well, when he was uh, talking about uh, theorizing about axiomatic uh, equality and how it is being performed at the level of reality or mundane trivialities and the performative contradiction, the uh, contradictory pools uh, uh, in, in the course of, of its performance. And um, uh, I, I was wondering how this can be tackled or thought of or gogged at the level of comics when this kind of uh, uh, contradictory pools can be uh, uh, can be visualized or can be thought of through visual metaphors that you were talking about what are some other tongue in the Declaration of Independence that uh, brilliantly can, coming out uh, in the text uh, as performative figures. And how this question of uh, contradiction, that performative contradiction, can be tackled uh, through the through this medium of comic art? That is the question. And with this question, I would like to invite Professor Kollan Kumar Dash, faculty at the Department of English Presidency University, to act as a discussant or respondent to this lecture and the text as well. Kollan. Asha, I just want to have a, one intervention to make. Uh, can I, can, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. You are audible. Yes. I was wondering since I, uh, you know, it was, it, it is actually, you know, uh, you know, it, it is always useful to talk about comics in a workshop format where you are you able to actually kind of draw up on a whiteboard and actually kind of give you the different mm -hmm. uh, comics books in place. I was wondering because, you know, this workshop, since it is kind of primarily meant for the students, the kind of you know the what the kind of images I I was showing from uh, by Jangar Singh Shyam, the proponent of Gondi art, and which is actually which through through him I will actually answer Oniban's question that it is not readily available for all our students, right? Because the text sometimes can be very expensive. I was suggesting that at my disposal I have a few and people who for for people or faculty people who are actually kind of taking up Vimayana during their courses during their semesters that at a later date at a, at a time of your uh, convenience i would be extremely happy to kind of mail you those images that i have almost 60 to 70 only images 
of art forms that I have collected over the years, so that actually you can use them as resources during your meeting. Oh, that is very lucky, very very because, because because it is very difficult for students to procure them. They are extremely yeah. costly, expensive. The books have gone out of print. I I don't know when. We, obviously, people publishers like Navayana are kind of waking up to this possibility, and they they are doing a lot. But I think you know, just going going into a village, into a Madhya Pradesh, and kind of documenting them at work, talking them, talking, you know, taking them through their life narratives. I think if I could kind of you know just you know you people would be busy, but let me know. I would be able to send you a few documents and the images. There is a kind of quite a, quite a few images. Um, uh, so, so, so that would be fun because you can actually kind of use them as a resource, and I will be happy if, if my comics creed increases. Okay, that so, so but this, 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 I would be glad to share my resources. Just let me know when you are at your disposal to do so. It would be very easy. The, those are high resolution images, but I really want my, you know, my my, my colleagues and my students to kind of go through them. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. That would be very beneficial to the students, and we can circulate among all the participants uh, via this mail, and uh, and we can also uh, uh, compile it in the e-book. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that was my idea. Actually. In the workshop, some of them. So I think I, 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 I think Kolnan, we are all waiting. Uh, no, I I was. We, with, I, we have bored you to death, but I think not not I, really, not really. It was a <laughs> wonderful talk, Shagun. Uh, please don't be modest. Um, no, thank you, Anirban, for having me here today. Um, Shagun, I, I will wait for your response to Anirban's question because I also had similar kinds of questions in my mind as I was listening to your talk. So I will wait for that response from you. And then we will carry that discussion forward. I think okay. that will be better. Okay. So, Arimar, should I respond to your question? Sure, sure, sure. Please. Okay. Arimar, I think, you know, uh, as you have seen in this, am I visible, Arimar? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So, as you have seen, you know, the half of this lecture was taken up talking about gender. <laughs> okay. You know, if I have to kind of, you know, break down my lecture, what did I actually speak about? I actually spoke about two very important things. That uh, you will not be able to understand the affective structure, that how it emotionally affects you. And I, I, you know, and I am really cutting down on the jargon here or the, you know, operative words too, because I think there are a lot many students here who are engaging with this uh, comics form for the first time. Uh, so, you know, these two things are related. Means we need to talk about Chandra Singh Shyam's suicide, you know, because, you know, it, it will not be an exaggeration to say there is this very troubling act of suicide um, behind the textual history of Vimayana. Now, the question, uh, you know, or even that you were trying to pose through the medium of the comics, I, I will not go into the, you know, the Dalit discourse here because that will kind of take me to a different realm of interaction. You know, whenever you look at Vimayana, you are always made to realize that it tends existence. That is, at, 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 at one hand, it is trying to restore, valorize, you know, celebrate its own tradition. And on the other, it is kind of constrained by the dynamics and the forces of mainstream media publications. Right. Now, the, you know, you know, the, you, and, and I will kind of pour into the fact that the historical epoch that Vimayana talks about, be it the conversion of Buddhism or be it, be it uh, when Ambedkar kind of goes to the uh, Prince of Baroda's uh, office and the carpet is rolled out before him, as, and that is a very, you know, you know, you know, dramatic panel that you find in Amur Chitrakot. 
okay right so that talent does not occur in vimayana when as ambedkar is entering the office ar dalu is kind of rolling up the carpet before him right now you know or even can i ask that you know kind of why this this if this very important act of exclusion does not feature in vimayana why vimayana would always revert to depiction of scenes that have an ecological weightage one this is one and when it comes to documenting history it is actually conventionally documentary what do i mean by that that it will actually in in, in, a, in a way the modern and contemporary graphic novel is do they will actually show you newspaper clipping clippings of the satara agitation for example it will have newspaper documentation posted transplanted on the comic surface into the comic story one so i think i, I think i i think that is you know that is that is a very problematic area and and as the like the discussion pro progresses i will have some time to think about it i i will have some uh, time to think about it because dalit lived experience this is a point that i have made and onilban is specifically pointing and i think that we are getting a bit refined in terms of jargon here and the dalit historiography that onirban is trying to make dalit with experience is fine we are doing away with grids panels gutters we are kind of this having this colorful foray but what about dalit historiography the documentation of that the, the documentation that you find on it you find in dimay and onirban for is a western canonical technique the just like we, uh, joe sacco the american cartoonist does in cases of those famous graphic novels like palestine where he will actually draw newspaper cuttings united nations reports onto the comic page so i will have to think about and and that is an important point because so it kind of again creates a fissure that there are two modalities to engage with vimayana one is dalit lived experience and how that dalit lived experience is brought into a dalit uh historiography and how that historiography is kind of presented as images there are no animal or you know anthropomorphic images to present that dalit historiography in vimayana you will find these type of things reproduced there so i don't i i i would not be saying that that is a lack Uh, that is that is not something which the gondi art form in vimayana has been able to find a way out or forward i think we can we can as we discuss later now we will be able to find a way anima kollan please yes uh, yes uh, uh, shagor i was uh, i think we need to uh, provide some uh, preliminary information about the text to our students uh, there are certain things your talk uh, probably uh, missed out and perhaps deliberately so because you were focusing on certain other uh, more important issues as i could see um, this is for the students so these are preliminary notes with which i'll uh, try to respond to your lecture one uh, this is a text Uh, the title of the text uh, plays with the uh, indian epic text of ramayana uh, as you can see it's a portmanteau term that uh, clubs together bhimrao ramji ambedkar's bhim with the last part of ramayana uh, <clears throat> and that's how the term uh, comes in uh, bhimayana and i think there is a politics of uh, title that that we can recognize there that's one secondly uh, again for the students uh, this is a text that is at least partly based on ambedkar's uh, unfinished autobiographical account waiting for a visa 
uh, at least the first few pages of the of the graphic text dimayana uh, focus on certain episodes of social exclusion caste based discrimination untouchability that ambedkar had to go through in his life Uh, and later on depicted in his autobiographical account waiting for a visa these are the pages that uh, visually depict some of those experiences uh now moving on to some of the issues that you have raised in your talk and uh, anirban has tried to underline some other related dimensions of the text um i was thinking of every time i teach this text to my students discuss it with my students at presidency uh, i am struck by the multi dimensionality of the text uh, what do Colin, i mean can, just just one second kollan can you can, yeah. I, can can i just one second yeah. uh, you know you are actually kind of making this kind of uh, kind of endowing the lecture with the completion before you end your response i would just like because for all of us here go back to that uh, you, you know that element of autobiography that you just spoke about if you got just for the benefit of for students kind of finish your response with that that would be very nice actually that's it carry on mm -hmm. okay okay yeah so i was thinking of the multi dimensionality of the text the text does a lot of things you spoke about uh, the newspaper reports on caste based discrimination but one of the interesting things that we need to notice when we discuss limayana is that it begins with what we might call contemporaneity of caste that caste is something that we live with whether you are a dalit or an ca or a caste hindu it doesn't matter it is something that you live with and how does this sex do that how does it uh, make the question of caste a contemporary issue at present it is something that we live with in our now in our present time how does it do this it does that by a subtly by creating this medium by exploiting this medium by deploying gondat by exploiting the visual medium by by deploying the graphic art form but it also because as you kept on emphasizing that the graphic art form creates a sense of immediacy it it is it's something that uh, you know constructs that uh, affect the sense of affect um, you are immediately caught up in that sort of uh, diegetic world that you spoke about but apart from that it also in terms of the narrative uh, it also does this it creates that sense of immediacy by uh, talking about caste in terms of reservation something that we uh, you know find somewhat problematic to discuss it is a point that we usually try to put under the carpet so it, it begins with the conversation between a young girl and a boy who talk about why there is this, there is caste based discrimination and how it can be countered uh, or the role of uh, the quota system reservation system and the, the moment you encounter that conversation right at the beginning of this text you are not simply encountering the autobiographical account of bhimrao ramji ambedkar uh, the incomplete unfinished uh, text waiting for a visa or a graphic representation of that particular text it's certainly not that so a it is the representation of ambedkar's life uh, to the extent that it follows ambedkar's unfinished autobiographical takes tweeting for a visa uh it also deploys uh, an indigenous tribal art form in a particular genre that is otherwise predominantly western uh it deploys the gond art form it it extrapolates uh, different newspaper items that speak about uh the persistence of caste to borrow that phrase from anand tumre's book Uh, eponymous with an eponymous title the the persistence of caste so you, you, you it does too many things uh and that multidimensionality of the text is very important for me because it is not simply about 
how it departs from the Western graphic art form in terms of how it deploys Gonda art form. Uh, it's not uh, simply about Ambedkar's life. It certainly speaks about certain episodes in Ambedkar's life, but it is not just that. This is one point that it, it puts together, it, it, it deploys too many methods, not just in terms of the graphic art form, but also in terms of the narrative strategy. Uh, you, you, now, this leads me to the next point, uh, and that is where I want to compare it with Amar Chitra Katha. Uh, and I will be very uh, uh, you know, uh, happy to get your response on that. The moment you look at Amar Chitra Katha representation of Ambedkar, there is, a, there is one uh, Amar Chitra Katha representation of Ambedkar as well. Uh, if you look at that particular text, uh, it begins with how uh, a saint comes, visits Ambedkar's house uh, before he is born and tells his father that a great man is going to be born in your family. And immediately you are caught up in this idea that, with this idea that a great man is going to be born. And those of us who have read Ambedkar know that Ambedkar was always very skeptical about this great man theory, that some messianic figure will come and solve every problem that we encounter. Uh, although, ironically, Ambedkar himself has been made into that kind of a larger-than-life figure uh, to be worshipped rather than to be raised, uh, rather than to be studied with care and attention. But that's uh, the sad part of our lives uh, anyway. But the more important thing for me is that it, <coughs> you know, if you juxtapose this particular narrative uh, with the graphic narrative of Machita Gata representation of Ambedkar, then you realize that Despite the fact that both the texts follow Ambedkar's life, by and large, they are remarkably different in terms of not just the visual part, which you uh, spoke about at length, but also in terms of its ideological focus. And as far as I can see, there isn't any incongruity between the ideological priorities of Amar Chitra Katha and the graphic art form that Amar Chitra Katha uh, you know, presents, uh, those panels proper Western format of those that, that the sequential art form that comics uh, medium is all about. Um, and if you look at Vimayana's ideological focus and the way it experiments with uh, the graphic art format uh, by deploying those, uh, that, that bone art form, by refusing to put these characters into uh, boxes, into panels, by refusing to simple to, to provide us with simple speech bubbles you know if you look at the text i'm sure you have noticed this and perhaps also discuss it with your students when you teach it but today it was somehow uh, you know not mentioned so i'm uh, uh, you know trying to underline this that if you look at the speech bubbles there are two kinds of speech bubbles that you encounter in mm -hmm. Himalaya. There is one kind of speech bubble where you see a swan, like swan-like speech bubble, which is basically about empathy, basically about making efforts, those speech acts that try to make an effort to empathize with the Dalits, who, which make an effort to recognize the uh, stigmatization of caste that we live with, etc. And the other kind of speech bubbles are <coughs> depicted with a sting, as if it's, a, it's, it's, it's the sting of a scorpion. The scorpion. It, has, it, 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 it has a kind of toxicity with it. Uh, so, you know, these are, uh, these graphic, uh, uh, you know, features are certainly there. But for me, it is very important to put the ideological, the political, alongside this focus on the graphic, or to, to put it in a more abstracted sense, the aesthetic part of the text. And there isn't, as I said, there isn't, for me, there isn't any conflict between these two. They complement each other. Just as the ideological priorities of Amar Chitra Gatha uh, are uh, sort of matched by its uh, graphic uh, features. Uh, I think it would be lovely to, for, if, if you could speak a little more on that, this merger yes. of the ideological with the graphic of the aesthetic. Yes, I, 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 can I, can I, can I speak on it, one? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. 
स्कॉर्पियन So you know, talking about this within within a within within a time frame of uh, one and a half hours yeah. is not easy, but but uh, you know you know I think we can also Kollan has already very importantly hinted that you know to what extent we can consider Vimayana as an extension of what what Ambedkar has followed studied. or advocated but my point was also that that you know you know you know setting up ideological priorities you know in 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 in, in, in departure from the kind of modes of ideological ideological priorities which the brand of amar chintra katha has uh, is a question that has to be dealt of course but in recent years the kind of productions or the visual productions that we have seen from other publication houses i can remember uh, of course tara from chennai who is also using the gold art to um, visualize other forms of urban and civic spaces and and and, and i think this is just just a way to extend what kollan and onirban was trying cumulatively to say that you know when you take the gondi art form to express and visualize something radically different and this is something very hypothetical say you know you know you know uh, there is a beautiful gondi painting by as far as i remember by the durga vyam herself which depicts the bhopal gas tragedy right, right. now the mm. question i would simply put because i, I can find you know I, i i really couldn't kind of go into the intricacies of every panel here because i was more interested keen to kind of give my students an in point of entry into this story world that you at least you would be equipped with a few basic infrastructural or comics grammar before you kind of enter and engage with this affective uh, kind of environment and the historiography that is associated with it so when durga bai kind of composes this very beautiful gondi painting on the bhopal gas tragedy the one thing that i started i started to felt that you know there is a kind of you know in in the dalit or a subaltern visual index that is somehow carried to this documentation or depiction of the urban space so this visual idiom you know i i i really you know i for want of a better label for want of a better pull category kollan and uh, orilpan people who are present here and still there with us uh, still here with us that for be- want of a better this dalit visual aesthetics somehow sticks to this gondi uh, practice of visually documenting uh, uh, experiences when the scene changes from such uh, places of exclusion and humiliation to depiction of other more violent uh, but not necessarily related to caste mind you violent uh, scenarios so you know i was kind of and colon kind of you know very uh, you know and i very sophisticatedly put it that way that he was actually kind of you know kind of pointing towards the kind of an extension and also questioning it that the autobiography and ramayana and and he kind of put it in a roundabout way that whether it is a very stable uh, you know visual idiom or whether we can kind of you know kind of call it a closure i think i think that that is that was the most you know in a very critical element of professor das's question here that to what extent do you consider vimayana an extension of what dr apetkar has done or what uh, what are the postulations 
of uh, uh, Dr. Sambhitskar as far as his ideology goes. So, you know, you know, you know, thank you. Thank, uh, thank you for this you know, insights. Kulan, I would maybe, maybe with, uh, with, with a lot more time, I think um, I will be maybe after, you know, the point here is that was to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, arm our students with a bit of a grammar so that they experience what Vibhayana kind of throws at their face. So maybe, sure. maybe with sure. their experiential politics, maybe I will keep your suggestions in mind and, and all the people will have been benefited. Anirvan, back to right. you. Right. Right. Back to you as well. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you have any question, you can unmute your microphone and put forward. And also, people I think are feeling, facing a bit of a you know internet problem. So, Anirban, you could actually share my uh, my email, official email. I would yeah. answer them accordingly in time. Yeah. So. Yes, uh, Anirban, there. I think you know some of the questions that I've received so far uh, that can be uh, put to the uh, Professor Mondol. Some of the questions, sure. uh, like, you know, Shalini Sharma is asking the question that, you know, uh, does the author intend to showcase that even after so many years of freedom, we Indian have not get rid of the orthodoxical attitude, which is a problem for the country. I mean, the how the, the text has been presented uh, in the in the Bhimayana, it has been a kind of you know violation of the orthodoxical methodology that we used to have earlier. Uh, so does it indicate a kind of orthodoxical mind setup and that has been broken away or done away or you know the you know uh, a kind of protest has been launched in terms of, of the you know, you know the doing away with the doing away with the you know uh, gutter that has not been used in the text you know. that is the question that has been asked somebody by the name of salini sharma sure. 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 Can i respond to that now sure sure, sure. okay so uh, shalini i think i am not sure whether you are here with us but still i think we will be able to get it later so you know i have already spoke, i have already talked about it in terms of the grammar but the plastic or the infrastructure you know these are very important words when you deal with comics, infrastructure, plastic, you know, whether it will be a kind of material plastic, whether it will be a very, you know, ontological plastic or an ideological plastic. So I think already, I, I have already kind of talked about it by the departures which the visual world of uh, Vimayana is able to kind of construct for itself. And, uh, you know, I, I, I also read a kind of a, a sense of finality in your question that uh, we Indians have not get, uh, have got rid of the orthodoxical attitude, which is a problem for the country. Now, of, obviously, one thing that I must say, which has already come, come about from Professor Das's beautiful and but brief commentary, that, you know, uh, and also the kind of points that I made that you know, you must understand Vimayana as a market product also. Exactly. exactly. Yes. That it yes. has a specific, you know, production history. That it is yes. not only situated between two cultures or two traditions. When when there was Jangar San Shyam who committed suicide, brought Gondiyar to the forefront, and he was kind of sandwiched between commercial exigences, commercial demands that you will see. You have to kind of transform your art to suit the mainstream medium, and also how to kind of you know kind of you know the kind of pressures he felt as a as as a marginal tribal artist, uh, and, and, and 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 later Vibhayana came, and after that after. Vimayana what? And this, and this is a very important point. This is a very important pathway trajectory, uh, Ms. Shalini Sharma, that we need to keep in mind that what after Vimayana? Before Vimayana, Professor Das has already talked about the ideological setup through Ambedkar's works, and I have talked about the visual setup through Jangar Singh Sham. Please Google out Jangar Singh Sham. You will be absolutely enthralled by what happened to that man. And, and, and kind of how he is related to Vimayana. Because I have found many colleagues who simply kind of skip this name, 
without Jangat and Sham, Vimayana would not have been possible. And that is that has been one that has been the one very important focus of my uh, lecture today. So later, so how Vimayana exists today, amidst other such texts which involve Dalit uh, imagery. But Shalini, let me kind of uh, kind of answer your question. Um, you know, in, not in an academic form. Let me say that um, since Vimayana does away with this idea of compartmentalization, it actually is talking about possibility of different horizons. Now, this is this is this this is this is not an academic posturing. This is what we feel when we take a Vimayana for the first time. That this is somewhere down the line is also a narrative about hope. Okay, now this is this is not a very academic way to put it, right? So I would answer your question by saying that the question could only be answered when you consider the post-production of Vimayana and its existence in comparison to the other Dalit texts that have been produced. Right. Now, Vivayana might have spearheaded something, but we must also need to keep in mind whether that the, 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 the visual aesthetics uh, that Vivayana was able to produce have fallen prey to more commercial, more, more, more powerful commercial forces in later years. So I think, I think this is not a straightforward answer to where query is Shalini Sharma, because I don't want to be that simple. I, I really want you to kind of go through this pre-Vimayana textual production, which Koldan so very much insisted on. Now, and how Vimayana exists today. Shubhatabha. Shubhatabha. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Before, before Shubhatabha, uh, you know, communicates the next question to Shagor, uh, I was also wondering uh, if we could briefly, quickly, uh, have a note on the subtitle of the text. Uh, look at the interesting subtitle of Vimayana. It says experiences of untouchability. Like untouchability yes. Now, if you look at the cover page, uh, you subtly notice, apart from the visual part of it, the uh, title Vimayana along with the subtitle experiences of untouchability. Now, what I find interesting uh, is that the text in its the, the narrative of Vimayana actually does so many things. So it's very difficult to be reductive about approaching this text in terms of simple narration of experiences of untouchability or social exclusion or discrimination. Because it does other things. As you rightly pointed out, it also has a note of hope, uh, a note of on the possibility of change as Anirban tried to uh, hint at, it is also uh, giving us a template of uh, equality, axiomatic as well as predicative. And I can uh, respond to that later if we have some time. Uh, but it, it has other things in it. But if you look at the cover page only, because that is how one buys a book. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. For the benefit, I am just kind of yeah. keeping the cover page in front of everyone. Yes. 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 So now, if you, if you look at the if you look at the text, that uh, the the cover page of the text, that is what it says. You, now, when you when you when you place this particular text in front of the Western uh, readership, they are more likely to take it up in terms of a hoo ha about you know what goes in the name of caste oppression in India and subcontinent, etc. Because that is what the Western readership likes. Now, when you when you live through the text, the text is about too many things. It has so many complexities uh, in relation to the caste-based uh, social experiences, in relation to Ambedkar's radical politics against caste, um, in relation to Ambedkar's politics of equality, etc. It has other uh, dimensions in it. But if you simply look at the cover page, because that is how one, as I said, that is how one buys a book at the cover page. You you, you know you get an idea of what you are going to encounter in the book, what you are going to experience in the book, and you make a choice. You buy it or you don't buy it. But as you live through the text, so there is a contradiction, and this is an interesting contradiction. Uh, I'm I'm wondering how Anand will respond to this uh, point that I'm trying to notice here. 
but there is certainly a kind of deliberate perhaps incongruity between kollan kollan you have left the meeting suddenly yeah okay uh, in connection with uh, kollan's uh, reflection i have just uh, i was thinking of and uh, just just this just came up uh, along with uh, kollan's reflection on the performative contradiction that is been uh, thought of or conceived of or visualized on the front page of the text i was thinking of that uh, in indian metaphysics and also in western metaphysics uh, uh, the idea of the visual visual metaphor or motif uh, has been paradigmatically uh, eulogized whereas as contradiction with it uh, the idea of the tactile the uh, uh, the the motif of touch has been considered impure and therefore the connection very, with uh, the very, image of very, the, uh, very, the, very, the, very important point very important uh, or even because, because can i hear can you hear me or even sure, sure. i am just uh, thinking about that how this uh, visual uh, theme ca can be uh, destabilized and settled when this intrusion of the touch uh, can be Uh, can be done can be done can be this, this you have just spoken my mind but you know yeah. because but, but to speak my mind you have to give me three more hours which i will not take today <laughs> so no 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 the point is that they the first thing that i have talked about and this is goes for any comics you know the, any comic any comic book that you have read would try to perform this in one way or the other to various degrees of success orinban and shubhrata babu and my students here that orinban has talked about this sense of touch i don't have the time today because you know to kind of talk about that how comics generates a sense of touch one how comics generates a sense of space second and how comics would actually spill out of the page and implicate involve you physical now this is something radical you, you you know if you go to a man of physics he would actually be wondering that how is this even possible for a flat two dimensional space so my my research for the last 6 years has been on this which oriban has and shubhrata babu has so graciously stated and, and to kind of you know you know when research becomes very rigorous you know it is very easy to kind of state its essence i have studied for the last so many years that how three dimensionality is produced on the flat surface of a page this is two dimensional on his one from brother babu my students here so when you look at the image how this image will give you a sense of three dimensionality unless it does you want you are far away from dalit lived experience you are far away from tintin going to tibet or batul the great fighting of pakistani tanks and this, Every, this is very particular to the text yes Because this is yes. all about the experience of untouchability and uh, exactly. you know just and all all are talking about this uh, question of touch and the phenomenology of the touch and this in fact in fact let me just add on it one we can discuss this with your students later that there is a specific comic by uh, Alison Bechdel. Alison Bechdel. It is a LGBT comic, and and I'm sure many of my students and people, I mean, comics enthusiasts here, have heard about it. Alison Bechdel. The name of the comic is Fun Home, and that is one of the one of the comics that I remember very distinctly, which kind of you know invokes this sense of tactility, that when you read the, you know, the, I I just show you. So suppose you are. Kind of holding the comic book like this, and that your thumb merges with the impressions of the two fingers of the author, God Himself. So you are. It, it seems that you are actually dwelling within the body of the author, right? So you know, you know, the comics is not cinema. Comics does not have sound, but it has this unique kind of techniques so that it will suck you in physically within its story world. right but you know rudimentary comics very rudimentary comics but they have a you know a commercial politics of their own like nonte fontein batul the great will not be able to give you this sense of tactility on irban okay and that is a very important question i take back to you that why 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 
the ayana is able to conjure evoke this sense of tactility as you say sense of touch or let me rephrase this while vimayana is in need of the sense of touch sense of touch is a very important element in vimayana why does it needs this sense of touch more than any other graphic novel say the any western graphic novel you name right so you know you you, you, you know when well, vimayana would actually is, is to a certain extent is about depiction of human bodies as well not the human bodies as we understand okay i think audible can we call it a day but i think we know we have already overshot our time for so much but you know i really don't want you to retain you any further kollan has been gracious enough to come back kollan we missed you yeah but my device got switched off switched off all of a okay. sudden because there wasn't enough uh, energy in my phone's battery okay chondri madi is here something to uh, trouble dedicated equality and axiomatic equality No. Uh, do we have yes. that much time? I can I can respond briefly to that. No, you can carry on the carry on with the discussion, but I think I will have to leave. I will have a yes. bit of a work. Okay. I can join you after five or six minutes. Okay. 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 Then I'll respond to Anirban's question. Uh, Please do. Please can carry a, on. You can take a quick break and come back if you. I just need to attend a few important yes. things. Yes. Yes. Shubhrata Babu, will that be fine? Audirban Shubhrata Babu, will that be fine if I join after six or seven minutes? I, I think I think uh, Professor uh, Das, we have been talking about some issues, you know, very critical issues. We can get back to him, you know, and then uh, by the time I hope we'll be joined by uh, Professor Mondul as well, you know. If he takes a break okay. for five minutes, okay. you know. Poland, please do carry on. Please do carry yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ha, huh. only one. I was uh, because I I I I uh, like that question that you asked on the idea of equality uh, as you encounter those graphic representations of Chavadar uh, Chavadar or Chavadar whatever it is however it is pronounced um, that the Chavadar Lake incident uh, in Himalaya. Uh, uh, if you look at that depiction, I think. Uh, certainly, as Shongobuto Chowdhury points out, this is there is a declaration of the norm of equality, uh, as it were. There is a there is a declaration. So, uh, I was recently li- reading uh, uh, a fascinating autobiographical account uh, of a Dalit man who tried to be in the RSS, uh, but eventually had to leave the RSS because he encountered certain. uh caste prejudices among some of the members in the rss and he was disgruntled with the institutions with which he, he worked uh, uh in his capacity as an rss pracharak and then uh, he of course went uh, uh on to follow an ambedkarite path so to say and if you look at that narrative and when you think of ambedkar's statements in the context of chaudhar lake uh incident you realize that uh there is a uh, declaration of the axiom of equality because it um, both ambedkar and this dalit autobiography that i'm talking about by uh, vanwar megwansi uh, they are they are both of the megwansi ambedkar uh, and the depiction in vimayana they are all talking about this norm of equality as if you know it is it, it, let me give you the concrete more concretized idea of this uh, by looking at that particular episode in the text of vimayana they are trying to drink water from the lake dalits are trying to drink water from the lake and the caste hindus will not allow them to uh, drink water from that lake and ambedkar comes in and say, uh, you know he 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 puts together this kind of protest against this caste hindu atrocity against the dalits and he says that we are here not just to drink water from this lake that is the predicative dimension of equality but we are here to declare the norm of equality in the sense that it doesn't matter whether we are allowed to drink water from this lake what we are claiming is our basic uh, you know human identity that is what we are trying to assert here uh, whether we are allowed to we have been living without drinking water from the chaudhar lake so that's not the particular that's not the most important issue at, uh, that that is 
uh, what we are concerned with uh, in this context. So that is what he says, and that is the axiomatic understanding of equality. Uh, maybe once, he, for instance, if you look at that autobiography, he is talking about uh, you know uh, leading a, a temple entry movement, and he categorically says that I am not interested to enter these temples, these Hindu temples. Uh, 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 but for many of these people, it might be important, but for, not for me. What I'm interested in is to declare this norm of equality, that I'm being treated unequally, and that is what I'm fighting against. So that is there. Now, when you think of that, that's the sort of differentiation between the axiomatic and the predicative part of equality. But when you look at the graphic part of this, graphic dimension of this particular episode, as it gets depicted, uh, represented in the Vimayana text, uh, I think uh, what the text, the graphic text, as Shagun was trying to point out, it creates a sense of immediacy. So the sense of immediacy is more tied to the idea of the predicative. Uh, it, it, it tries to uh, catch the attention, the grab the attention of the reader uh, who is, you know, visualizing this text, reading this text, going through this text, living in this in the in the world of this text, as it were. Uh, it, it, it is focused on the predicative. But if you look at the graphic depictions of the text, it also creates certain anthropomorphized, abstracted forms, which also gives you an, uh, at least a possibility of thinking of the predicative situation vis-a-vis -vis equality in terms of some kind of an abstracted status. Right? So there is this sort of, through the visual, through the graphic, medium, there is, a, there is an effort, perhaps an unconscious effort, to bridge the gap between uh, the, you know, the axiomatic idea of equality, the norm of equality, that is declared by Ambedkar, that is asserted by people like Megwansi and uh, many others, perhaps, and a particular predicative moment of equality. Hmm? Uh, so the graphic dimension of the text is something that creates a bridge between these two, rather than simply creating a sense of immediacy. So uh, just to sum it up, it, the graphic form creates a sense of immediacy, and I'm suggesting that the sense of immediacy is always predominantly tied to the predicative, a particular context. So in that sense, when we come across that depiction of the Chawadar Lake episode in Vimayana, we are certainly encountering the predicative dimension of equality, the predicative concern of equality at that moment, as it is being represented at the moment of my reading or visualizing the text, that particular episode in the text. But at the same time, if you look at the graphic art form, the gold art form in the text, there is, as Shagor was pointing out, there is an anthropomorphized abstracted form that we encounter. Hmm. And yeah. if you recognize that, you perhaps get a scope to think of a possibility, a graphic as well as ideological possibility, to bridge the gap between uh, the predicative idea of equality, Chawadar, etc., and a more axiomatic dimension of equality, which is more abstracted, uh, as Professor Choudhury uh, analyzes it, an axiom in mathematical sense is something that does not need to be proved. Uh, hypothesis has to be proved, but uh, uh, an axiom doesn't uh, need any, any, any proof. So that axiomatic, somewhat abstracted sense of equality is uh, there alongside this focus on the predicative through the graphic art forms, focus on creating a sense of immediacy. That it has to be the affected, the affected part of the text is actually tied to this, the idea of immediacy. The moment you, you know, and the idea of immediacy is also uh, tremendously uh, loaded with ideological it's trust it's because the body. Huh? Yeah, and exactly, exactly. This is uh, this is of course connected with the idea of touch, tactility, and the exactly. body. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly. Embodied, so, and, uh, and and this is the performative space. This is the performative space. space. And yes. we must also, for the sake of uh, our students, I think we must also 
uh, let them know the context in which I, I am I'm responding to your question. There is a beautiful talk by Professor Shomuvudha Choudhury on the idea yeah. of axiomatic equality and predicative equality available on YouTube. So you, you can, you can uh, look for that particular lecture. Please try to listen to it and you will probably get a clearer picture of what uh, Anirban and I are trying to discuss here in the context of exactly. Jumayana. Right. Yes, Anirban. <coughs> Professor Mandali is here. Oh, is he? Back. He's back. He just he... wrote something here. A list. A list of graphic art. Okay. okay. So, see thank you, Professor Das. Very interesting discussion on the question of axiomatic equality and how this uh, question of touch or touchability is being changed to this medium of visual art. That is very interesting, very contradictory kind of thing, very um, uh, conflicting kind of thing that visual art, what is being constantly being eulogized, paradigmatically eulogized in uh, philosophy, in metaphysics, and uh, some other in the Western and uh, Indian uh, uh, political and metaphysical thinking, but how this is being challenged, unsettled, when uh, as against this, the idea, the question of tactility, touchability, mm. which is considered very much impure, uh, mm. it is being intruded into the mm. scape of the visual, and mm. the visual is being destabilized uh, through this kind of intrusion. Mm. That tactical, mm. political element how can we th that that can be energized into the text? That is the point, and mm. that is very much very beautifully discussed by Professor Dash. And uh, I think with this note and with Professor Shagot Karangamandal's long list of graphic art, graphic novels, which you can follow, and also you can follow uh with uh professor show of dr choudhury's lecture on youtube which is on uh equality ambeskaut's uh concept con conception of equality has been performed uh in connection with uh Vimayana and other takes uh which is which is and the chavada tank which is considered as the Mm, as, as important, as significant as of uh, French Revolution that has been declared there, a norm of, that is the norm of the declaration, uh, norm of declaring equality. And that can be analyzed and um, uh, talked about and discussed. So mm. with that uh, note, we uh, go on to, we move on to Momita. Uh, microphone over to Momita. Shall we talking about our previous discussion? Something. Momita. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. This lecture and this QA session was indeed wonderful. Professor Mondo's lucid yet interesting appealing style of presenting the lecture associated art with both the significance of the art form and the affective quality in the narrative of the mind. His academically engaging yet energetic way of presenting the lecture helps us to understand technical aspects of graphic novels, associated us with the development of graphic narrative in Indian, in Indian context and made us aware how Bhimayana stands as a significant text in this tradition. The series of questions and Professor Mondo's engagement with our audience definitely has taken up our workshop into a level we could hardly imagine. By saying that, we are at the end of the second session of the seven days with workshop on women's rights in popular literature. On behalf of organizing committee of IQAC and Department of English, Hanshipur College, we thank Professor Shagotarum Mondol for such a well thought, academically engaging and informative lecture. We thank all the participants faculty members and research scholars who have been with us in this effort. Such lectures will definitely help students in their curriculum they study as well as help in widening their physical and analytical perspective. We also thank Professor Kolan Kumar Dash for his engagement today. 
Uh, nothing needs to be added. You have you know, very adequately addressed the issues that should have been addressed. And uh, I would like to thank everybody for being with us all the way. And with this positive note, that tomorrow also we'll have a very rich harvest of intellectual you know, benefits in the coming sessions. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.